So Andrew, when people are out there shopping around for life insurance policies, it is really, really easy for them to get confused because of all the options that may be available to them. And one of the things that you don't want to do is make a mistake in this category and end up leaving your family without the protection that you really intended for them to have. And so when you're looking for any type of life insurance policy, the biggest question that you're gonna to wanna to ask is should you buy a permanent policy or a term policy? So understand, Andrew, there are benefits and drawbacks to both type of policies. And so, of course, in our videos, we are going to try to cover the similarities and the differences and the pros and cons of a permanent policy versus a term policy. So you're definitely going to want to stay locked in today. Hi, my name is Carson Graves, President and CEO of the Retirement Education Center. And my name is Andrea, Director of Operations at the Retirement Education Center. And the reason we've created these educational videos is to help to make the difficult and confusing retirement process simple. Absolutely, Andrew. And we do this, of course, by incorporating a team of strategic partners ranging from certified financial analysts, certified financial planners, estate attorneys, insurance advisors, and other needed professionals to help us build a retirement roadmap that's going to let our clients know when, where, and how they can reach their retirement goals. For specialized strategies on how to maximize your retirement income, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we upload new videos. So Andrew, we know that life insurance um, is a product that most everyone needs, but far too many people actually have it. You know, when you're young and healthy, it's very, very easy to put off purchasing life insurance. But I'm gonna tell you, after being in this business so long, I think that is a critical error for you to make because the older you get, the more expensive life insurance becomes. And with that being said, you also risk actually having a health um, issue later on down the road as well as you get older, which will compromise your ability to actually be insurable for life insurance when you need it the most. Also, Andrew, I wanna point out this very uh, misguided notion that many people hold in various communities that you know they don't want to purchase life insurance because they feel that someone is going to be profiting off of their death. But what they're being misguided about is that when they do pass away without the proper funds, someone is going to be burdened by their death as well. So if you do have loved ones or anyone that you care about enough in which if you're no longer around, you would like your financial obligations to be met, then the best love note that you can actually leave for those people is a adequate life insurance policy. But the $250,000, $500,000 million dollar question may be, is should you have a term policy or if you should own a permanent policy? And so we're gonna cover the details of those two types of policies in today's video so you can have a better understanding of those factors. But before we get into that, there are two rules to retirement income that we always wanna give our audience. And Andrew, what are those two rules? Well, rule number one is to never run out of money. And rule number two is to never forget rule number one. So let's go ahead and talk about the differences between term and whole life so you may better decide which type of policy may suit you best. So let's go ahead and now discover the difference between term versus a whole life insurance policy. Before we get started, let's go ahead and talk about no matter what type of policy that you're going to be trying to pursue, there are going to be factors in how it's going to be priced as far as how much you're going to pay for it. The factors are going to include your age and your gender. So if you're older or if you're a male, the price of your insurance is going to normally be higher than that of a female and of course of someone who's younger. Your height and weight is going to make a difference. So if you're obese, then there are chances that you're going to have a what they call a rated policy in which you're going to pay higher than someone who's healthier. They're going to look into your past and current health conditions. And so if you've had some things in the past in which you had to recover from um, that may be detrimental to you getting that policy, you may one, not be able to be covered at all, or they're going to rate you very high based off of that risk factor that you once had. They're, they may even look into the history of your um, family and your your siblings, um, depending on the company and the, t and the size of the policy that you're going for. If you use nicotine or marijuana, um, any type of um, substance of that nature, um, your policy will be rated higher than someone who's not using those type of substances. 
And if you had any substance abuse where you had to have um, you know, rehab or whatever it may be, then your policy is more than likely going to have a higher rating than someone who's not in, um, uh, been down that particular path. Your credit, e insurance companies even take a look at your credit. They want to see if your, cr your credit is worthy enough to give you the type of insurance um, rating that you may be seeking. If you have poor credit, um, th there's very likely that they could rate that policy differently. Your criminal history is going to be included. Your driving record, if you have DUIs on your, on your um, history, um, chances are they're going to either not cover you or they, it has to be um, some time that have really passed in order for you to get a policy enforced. And nevertheless, that policy is more than likely going to be um, rated higher. If you have speeding tickets, so if you like to zoom down the highway and without um, any notion of how that may impact you later on for other things that you may want to do for your family, then you might want to think about that because your driving record will play into how they will rate your insurance policy. If you like to, if you are you are a, a adventurous person, you love these dangerous hobbies and going mountain climbing, and and you like to fly, fly planes um, in your spare time, then of course or, or skydiving, the insurance company is going to rate your policy differently because you have a higher risk of of actually um, leaving here too soon. Um, when you're partaking in these type of hobbies. So let's now go ahead and talk about um, the differences between a term policy and a whole life policy. So when it comes to a term life insurance policy, it is a very simple form of life insurance. I mean, it's very easy to understand term. Hey, I'm going to get X amount of coverage. I'm going to pay X amount of dollars. There's There are no bells and whistles when it comes to term policy. But understand, a term policy is only going to provide you a temporary life insurance protection. And so if you're on a limited budget, that may be the way to go. And when you're looking at term, there are different levels of term. You can have increasing term policies where the, um, the premiums actually go up in value. You can have a level term policy where you're just paying a level price for that term. Or you can also have a decreasing term policy where like on a mortgage, if you're going to say, I want to have insurance on my mortgage and, and as that mortgage go down, that term policy can also follow it as well. Understand this, and this is probably the biggest key when you're talking about term versus whole life. There is no cash value in a term policy. Terms are, can be anywhere from 5, 10, or 20 years, or 30 years, or even longer, um, depending on what company um, you're actually going to be looking at getting a term policy through. Now, if you outlive your term policy, it will no longer be in effect for you. So if you have a 30-year term and you have lived uh, past that 30 years, that term policy will end. Now, term, of course, is a less expensive option than permanent insurance. And we already covered this, and it's less expensive for a female versus a male. So I want to show you a hypothetical quote from an insurance company online. You can you know, play around with this um, all over the Internet. You can find these different quotes. But we're going to look at Mr. I Don't Know, and we're going to look at him being at age 30, looking for a $500,000 policy, a 20-year policy. Um, it's going to be a term policy. He's going to pay $421 a year for that policy. Now, if we look at Mrs. I Don't Know, the same age, same policy amount, same term limit, she will only pay $354 um, annually for that policy. Now, when we look at a whole life policy for $500,000 for Mr. I Don't Know, that whole life policy, look at the vast difference, is going to cost him $4,015 on an annual basis. Now, Mrs. I Don't Know, same thing. Um, although it is less expensive, it's still much higher than her term where she would be paying approximately $3,558 annually for her whole life policy versus a term policy. So you can see the vast difference in costs there and why many people, many people sometimes because of that will choose to um, opt for a term policy versus a whole life policy. Now, understand this, you know, depending on the company, some term life policies are convertible to a permanent policy. So let's just say you have a this 20 year term here and you reach, um, you know, you're 19. You realize, hey, you know what? I really think I, I still need this 500,000. Maybe I can convert it to a whole life. Maybe you can afford it at that time. It's going to be more expensive because you're older, but you may be in a better financial situation. Well, some policies will allow you to convert that term policy. You don't get any cash from the amount that you've put in. There's no cash value that you have. They would just simply allow you to convert that policy without having to go through another 
underwriting situation um, and you can st still maintain coverage there. So Carson, just so I'm clear, if I have a term life policy and it ends and I'm done paying with it, um, where does all that money that I put into it go? It's a good question, Andrew, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about that. As we mentioned in our slides, with a term policy, unfortunately, when that term actually ends and you're still alive, that money goes to no other than the insurance company. So term is a very profitable product for most companies because a lot of times, quite frankly, they don't end up paying that death benefit out. But of course, when you have a permanent policy, that plan is going to last as long as you're alive as long as you continue to pay the premiums on that policy. So now let's go ahead and go back into our lesson and finish our topic for today. So let's now take a look at a, a whole life policy. We know there is a big difference between a whole life policy. First of all, whole life is a permanent life insurance policy and it's going to be designed to be there for the remainder of your life as long as you stay current with your premiums. Now, if you stop paying on it, then obviously that policy will end inevitably. Uh, payments will not go up on a whole life policy for the most part. Those payments are going to pretty much stay exactly the same. Now, we know as we looked at this example over here, a whole life policy is much more expensive than a term policy. But when it comes to a whole life policy, there is a perk that uh, a term policy does not have. And of course, it accumulates cash value. So you have money that is growing tax free and tax deferred inside of a whole life policy. With that being said, you can also take policy loans. You can't do that with a term policy, of course, because there's no value there. But you can take a policy loan on a whole life policy and you can take that policy loan um, and, and it can come out to you tax free. So you can use that for a myriad of things from college education to pay off bills. So many things you can use your your cash value or your policy loans for when it comes to a whole life um, life insurance policy. But I often like to tell people that, you know, life insurance doesn't always have to be um, incorporated with your death. It can also be um, incorporated with some living options for you as well. Now, when it comes to whole life, it's not just one type of whole life insurance. You have a universal life policy, which allows you to uh, pay you know, some flexible premiums there. And you also have a variable life policy in which you can actually invest your premium dollars um, in stocks, bonds, and money market accounts. Also understand whenever you're dealing with any insurance policy, um, annuities, or anything alike, the guarantees are always going to be based on the claims paying ability of the insuring company. So, you, you know, I would encourage most of my clients to deal with A rated carriers or at least B, um, you know, plus plus rated carriers. You know, it's just highly rated carriers in which you feel confident about their um, ability to actually stay around. So as we sum up um, a term versus a whole life insurance policy, as you know, I always like to give you the ideal of wh which one would you might choose. So if you're looking to control your policy length, if you're saying, hey, I, I only want this policy for a 10 year time frame, 15, 20 years, then no doubt a term policy is going to be more suitable for you because you can choose your term, your term length when you're picking a term policy um, and to cover any um, things that you're going to need covered um, in case you die too soon. Now, if you want lifelong coverage, then we know that's the opposite of term. You're going to want to purchase a whole life policy because a whole life policy is going to provide you lifelong coverage. If you want your premiums to pretty much stay the same, that could be for a term and a whole life policy because a level term policy and a whole life insurance policy premiums, they're usually going to remain the same throughout that uh, term. If you're looking for low premiums, you're, you're basically working on a budget then you're going to want to definitely take a look at a term policy for now because term insurance is, is relatively cheap if you're healthy, um, but it, it is temporary and it has no cash value. If you're trying to accumulate said cash value, of course, you're going to want to have a whole life policy because only a whole life policy is going to provide you a cash value that you can then later on maybe use as tax-free income through policy loans. Now, if you're looking to provide any type of protection for your estate, um, for your beneficiaries, or leave a legacy, um, if you're trying to make sure that you can cover estate taxes of any sort, then you're going to want to own a whole life policy. You can do that with a term policy, but you better pass away before that term because at that time, you won't be able to leave that benefit to your estate. But with a whole life policy, you're going to, you're going to guarantee to your estate that you're going to be passing on a benefit 
because that policy is not at risk of ending. With all our videos, we like to point out, no matter what your situation may be, always consult with your own personal financial advisor and tax advisor uh, when it comes to your particular situation. So I really hope that this information gave you some insight into how a term policy differs from a permanent policy. Please understand that these videos are created for educational purposes only, and you should always consult with your own personal financial advisor or tax advisor regarding your personal situation. For more information on this subject matter or any topics that we've covered in the past, please feel free to reach out to our office and also leave any questions or comments in the section below. To learn more about our services and how we can help you to increase your chances of not outliving your retirement savings, make sure to click on the link in the description below and sign up for our free Maximizing Your Retirement Income Masterclass. After this video, check out our other videos that we've created that will give you tips on how to maximize your retirement. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share it with a friend. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you have questions, we have answers.